back to the Bailey Podcast. Today, you, you might not see any guests, but today we have Mr. Smith, who we're going to be interviewing, and so we will be asking him some questions. And so, would you like to introduce yourself first? Sure. So, hello, everybody. My name is Mr. Smith. I am the lead marketing teacher here at Elite. Um, I teach marketing, I teach gaming, and I also lead the podcast in the yearbook. So, that's me. So, so I, I, have, I have exactly two questions here because uh, hey. everybody stole mine before I got a chance to put them in the document. <laughs> so um, I, I feel like I should ask the most important one here. Uh, how did your career in journalism start? What, what oh, okay. made you decide to go into journalism? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, I went to quite a few different high schools, um, you know, growing up and I ended up at a charter school. And when I was there, I would get dropped off at eight in the morning and I'd get picked up at five. So I found things to fill the day. So they had the school newspaper that just started up and it was a former daily press reporter teaching it. So I thought, okay, cool, I'll do that. So I gave it a shot and there was like six of us. And by the end of the year, it was just me and the teacher, but it got me into to the writing. I always loved to write. So it kind of got me into like, okay, well, this is how you write for an event, or this is how you you know do an interview because it's all different. And then from there, it just went on, you know, um, newspapers and blogs and podcasts and all that fun stuff. Oh. Um, and then my my second question here is, uh, what type of music do you listen to, and who are your favorite artists? Um. Well, okay. I grew up off of um, like hard rock, heavy metal, and rap. Mm. um so i listen more to rap than anything mm-hmm. um i really like tech nine and eminem um of course i like the classics like um tupac and you know the west coast kind of rap mm-hmm. but um i'll pretty much listen to anything right now um i you know my family listens to all this uh you know george ezra and stuff like that and it's really cool i get into it but it's you know, my music is a little more fast paced. I'm used to having music that if I go hit the gym, I can work out to. So, you know, having something like Tech Nine or um, ASAP Rock Atmosphere, that's the kind of stuff oh, I that lo- I-, I love. ASAP, uh, ASAP Rock, he's, he's good. ASAP Rock is so good. He's, he's kind of like a space cadet. He's just so out there. Um, but I really enjoy his music. So um, I don't, you know, a lot of people would look at me and they're like, oh, you don't listen to indie rap, but I do. I love, love, love indie rap. Do you like any of the experimental stuff? Like, like, cause you mentioned ASAP rock and he's, he's more on that side. Yeah. You know, I would give it a shot. Um, I like to just go through and see what, what artists are popping up or even what artists I may have missed um, and see what they got. Um, like I said, atmosphere is one that I just came across by you know accident a long time ago. And I stuck with them. Because I've, really, I've heard really about good. him. I haven't listened to too much of his stuff, but I've heard a few songs. I, I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but as long as as long as you tell you're telling me a good story, like I'll listen to it. All right, cool. All right, all right. Looks like it's my turn. All right, all right. So we're gonna start it off with basic. Who's your favorite student? You already know. Like, who is your favorite? <laughs> Definitely me. Me. Yeah, he I even says Cindy hyphen Lou hyphen. <laughs> that doesn't make you a favorite student. <laughs> Uh, of course, I don't have any favorite students. Um, I am very um, happy to have the group mm-hmm. I work with on the podcast, mm-hmm. but um, no favorites. I mean, who, I'm who not do even you like the class, most? Then? So I'm who not even like his student. I, I like all of you equally. Nah, nah, nah. Right, let's narrow it down then. Let's nah. narrow it down then. Nah. Your favorite I'm be like, editor. Nah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> who's your favorite music producer? Like, since okay, we Jay, 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 you're you're my favorite music producer. Yeah, boom, I'm the favorite. All right, yep. cool. Thank you. Uh, right. Well, I'm not even a part. I'm, I don't even. I'm not even your student. I don't. I don't have any of your classes. So, so I'm you probably don't, really, which is which is sad, because I think I you'd enjoy my classes. I'll probably be your least favorite student. I always ask questions. Several times. <laughs> Oh, All thank right, you for um, the question, though. Uh, next question. Do you like your job? Oh, absolutely. Um, oh, I've worked God. a lot of jobs in my life. Um, so I, I can tell you I've worked from the movie theaters to being a janitor to just working my old way all the way up. And oh. I absolutely love being here. Um, oh. oh, wow, that's nice. That's very nice. I've, I know I've you had used a, to do 
indie rap, yeah. I think. Oh. Yeah. So, so for five years, um, I did uh, indie rap, and that was like right out of high school. Um, well, last year of high school, going out of high school, and I told myself if I give it five years and I don't like make it, so can you read? Oh, I can absolutely. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Wait, what? Right. Yeah. What's what did you go by? Did you just go by Nolan Smith? I did not. I need to. So find what this. did you go by? I need to find I'm this. not going. I am not going to say. <laughs> but um it was it was a lot of fun um i'm a writer you know at heart so i loved making lyrics and i love battle rap that was always fun um i used to i was a security guard for a while and i would battle rap students at the college um and that was a lot of fun because nobody expects it and okay can you was. give us a freestyle right now yeah 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 a freestyle oh, spot I don't think I can. It's been a very long time since I've done that. Um, uh, I think it would come across as, you know, when you hear those people and they try to rap and it sounds very nursery rhyme. I don't want to do that. Come on. I already listened to all my block. Like, it, it can't be worse than that. Like, did you not hear the guy's um, music on, on my block? <laughs> right. But, no, I, I I would need some time to at least write something down and get back in the, the you Then know, you can tell us next state. week. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Sure. There we go. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, yeah, we'll uh, that's, that's, last time you said uh, you all the questions twin. I have for right now. <laughs> oh, I, and I do have a twin. For those of you wondering, I know. Yes, I and you were supposed to show us your Batman thing, figuring thing. At the oh, the box. ugly Batman figure. Yes. And you never do. It was too ugly. I had to get rid of it. No, you got rid of it. I did. I was we like in the trash. Uh, I didn't even see it. Okay, all right. Who's up? Who's next? I think it's Maxwell. What do you got for me? Um, why did you become a teacher? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I actually never planned to become a teacher at all. I never planned to work in education. Um, growing up, it was a firefighter. And then when I hit high school, it was whatever makes me money. So um, if it meant working at McDonald's or if it were, meant working at KFC or the movie theater, that's what I wanted to do, just you know, to get in the habit of making money. But once things started going, um, I started gravitating towards education. I was a security guard for, um, for a school for a while. And after that, school, schools kept pulling me back in. Um, I did outreach for uh, charter school. I've done grant writing for charter schools. Um, I taught uh, graphic arts for a little bit back in 2007 through 2010, and I just really enjoy it. I love working with students, um, and you know, if you don't love your job, like you're gonna hate it every day. Thanks. So, I absolutely love my job. I love working with students, and um, I love saying that even if I made a little tiny difference in someone's life, that that's worth it to me. It could be a tiny, minute difference, but. but that's what happened to me in high school i had teachers that cared and it meant the world actually i had quite a few of those teachers show up to my wedding last year um and that was i mean i graduated in 2000 and i still you know keep in touch with them so so yeah it, it's I'll, the calling uh, how come we well, wasn't invited to the wedding okay <laughs> because we well, and to be honest with the whole covid protocol you know it was it was one of those you have to start trimming people down and it sucked because i have so many people that i wanted to invite um but you have to you know trim it down so, for safety's sake so was it, i, I live streamed it yeah wait was i on the list though like was i on your mind when you was trying to invite some people was i was i, was I, <laughs> I, th I think you're all great students there we go. Hey, I just wanted to say that because you were talking about making a difference. And so I was just going to say that you did make a difference. We have the podcast now. And I'm so thankful that Elite gave me that chance. Um, you know, I came to Elite. This is my second school year here at Elite. And um, as soon as I came, I, I said like, hey, like, can, can we do a podcast? I did a podcast at the previous school and the students loved it. And I loved working with them on it. But this was going to be a different setting because I've never worked virtually so i wasn't going to have a room full of students to work with it was going to have to be over zoom so yeah um, leading into that i wanted to ask like what was the funniest like most embarrassing moment that you had it with that podcast because i know you told us about the life one where someone that happened but like you're right what is like um you know i think 
one of them would have to be just um because we had quite a few guests on there we had a we had students just really um freeze up when we were talking to an elected official and um he was really easy to talk to um but our students were overly nervous because usually they're not and for them they felt it was embarrassing for me it's a growing um it's, it's a growing situation you're allowed to be nervous but um they were just after it like oh that was horrible this and that. i was like no no not at all but you know the students were really you know hard on themselves about it but you know we did the whole thing because so over here it's cool we have zoom we get to do it all over that over there um i commissioned somebody to paint a background on a big piece of plywood i boarded it up to the wall um so that way they always had this like chalkboard background with the podcast name on it and um it, it was just it was really cool you know and i i didn't think i would be able to replicate anything like that here and i didn't i feel like we did something a lot better um i look at the episodes we've done here and i mean cindy lou you remember so there's been times where it's been me you and you know betsy and that was our podcast and now we have students i mean look at the screen we have a lot of kids interested we had more on the lego one we have found our niche here and it's so cool to see so um yeah absolutely yeah. love working with the podcast i definitely get what they meant about being so nervous that you were so hard on yourself afterwards because i definitely been so nervous before and i did such a bad job in episodes where i get so like right um, hard on myself afterwards but, and th tip, but that's, part, that's part of the experience though right because oh go ahead I was just going to say, because um, Mrs. Cesari told me this uh, tip was um, just like, because nervous and excitement is like the same thing, like your brain thinks. So you just have to trick yourself into being exciting. And Jillian coined the term excited. And so it's like excited, but also nervous at the same time. And so you have to just tell yourself you're excited. And so you you're not so nervous. There you go. And that's somebody who... Cindy Lou's been on here since episode one, so that's that's really good advice. Um, all right, Empress, you got a question for me? Yes. Um, have you ever watched uh, like very old scenes or cartoons like that? Because I watch very old stuff. Oh, you know that's a fun question. Yeah, um, absolutely. So I'm a big fan of old cartoons and whatnot, Looney Tunes and, you know, Elvin and the Chipmunks and all that fun stuff. Um, grew up off of like Nickelodeon, you know, Doug and all that. So um, I'm still a fan of animation. I just watched uh, Wolf Walkers this week with my family. Uh, and that's a really cool animated movie if you haven't seen it. But oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, that's a fun question to break it up. Thank you. Um, and I ahead. think Izzy also had a question. Okay because I think she said earlier, I don't know if she still remembers it. Maybe. Maybe. Um, I had a couple more questions I wanted to ask you. Oh, go for it. Yes. Um, are you a professional podcaster? Um, I, I'm not sure you can say professional, but yeah, I do podcasting uh, on a regular basis. I work with a number of podcasts, actually. Um, I do a lot of production for them, and I'm in one myself. I'm actually in an episode tonight that I'm recording. So um, yeah, it's it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, I Right now, I do production for one in Hawaii, and it's very different than what I talk about. So it, it's a cool thing to see how other people are doing it and how to, how to arrange music and graphics to go with what they're talking about versus what what i talk about in mine so um yeah oh i see a question in the chat i gotta jump in there so what was my first job i had two two jobs that i got around the same time and that was like 15 or 16. um i was a student assistant for the school so i built um shelves and whatnot because i was like the the bigger student so hey go build shelves and storage for us so i did uh and then i worked at cinemark i worked at the movie theater uh and i had that job for a few years i absolutely loved it um it's probably the most fun i've had at a job uh and not just because of the free movies or free popcorn like it was you know a lot of people around the same age that i worked with i had really good managers um uh, and it was just great i got to, i moved all the way up the ladder i got to build movies when they when they used to be film like you would get six canisters uh delivered and you had to build up the movie reel so i did that 
Yeah, I wanted That's to ask, cool. um, what advice do you have for students wanting to be a teacher or wanting to follow like the same career path? Um, okay, so if somebody wants to be a teacher or just work in education, just make sure you you want to do it for that reason and not because you think it's a good paycheck because um, trust me, teachers use a lot of uh, our paychecks on resources for students and that happens in the public school system all the time. There's long hours. Um, I've, you know, at all my jobs as a teacher and in education, I've worked way over um, my regular hours, but it's because you have the drive for it. You want to see it happen. So as long as you're genuinely interested in helping students and working with students, um, I would say first off, volunteer go like when i was in uh, ninth grade i volunteered to read to students at uh, elementary school and i realized i don't want to work with elementary school students very much but it got me thinking like but i do want to work with kids i loved doing that and you know i work with elementary students now too that's just i'm just joking around but that was always my thing well as i kept going up the ladder like yeah yeah i'll teach but not the younger kids but my i'm just used to teaching High school and junior high it's always been my um my go-to um but yeah i would say go volunteer get a get a feel for it and start start small you know apply to be an assistant see what you think about it um and then if you if you do want to do it i gotta tell you it's the most rewarding job you'll find you'll absolutely love it all right i also had a question too oh go ahead so so, um, how old were you when, when you made your first YouTube video, like for oh, the podcast? Yeah. Okay. So, um, I didn't do my first, uh, YouTube video till I was probably like 26 or 27. Um, but then it was, it was still like a brand new kind of thing, um, and now it's come so much so, so far, you know, I, I post podcasts and videos up, you know, every week and to how it is now to how it was then it's just totally different. But um, I know a lot of students want to get into the you know, streamer or YouTube um, kind of filled. I think that's great. I think anybody can get into it. You just got to realize you need the audience to do it. So um, do something interesting. Um, be interesting yourself. Uh, and be yourself. I see a lot of people out there trying to copy so and so because so and so is successful. It's not going to work. Trust me. Uh, that's so. My first question was, what's your favorite video game? Okay. Um, like of all time. Uh, at least if you don't have one, name three at least. Okay, I like that. That makes it a little easier. So, um, I would say, I mean, I grew up off Nintendo, so the Mario games, Super Mario Brothers three, being my favorite. Uh, I yeah. think that's an awesome, awesome game. Um, I remember back in high school, my go-to game was Goldeneye, you know, the James Bond game. That was a lot of fun. And more recently, I would say I really like the Assassin's Creed games um, for like the historical uh, facts of it, you know, the, right. the Viking one and, you know, the, the original one that took place way back when with Altair. Um, I, again, I love stories. So if you tell me a good story, I'm, I'm going to enjoy it. But um, I have a PS5. I just haven't taken advantage of it yet. I've been playing uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales on there, and that's been really cool. But it's hard to find time to play games, you know, when you have like a million things to do. But I plan to find time soon. Because I know you also have a class that's with games. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, I have in, more questions. Yeah, well, I'll come right back to you. But in regards to games, yeah, I teach um, the history of esports uh, and video games, which was a really fun course we introduced last semester. Uh, JavaScript and scratch coding are ones with a deal in animation. Um, and then this year, we also just launched wearable technology. So we're, uh, it's a class dedicated to, you know, apps on your watch and what you can do. Uh, all right, Dom, go for it. When did you start the podcast and why? Uh, the Elite one? Yes. Uh, so I started it just a few months after starting uh, at Elite. So that was what, 20, 2020? It was in October. It, um, it was in October, yeah, 2020. 20, yeah. 2020, yeah. Um, and I started it just to see if students actually wanted to do this. 
you know, um, because I thought it was a good idea, but that doesn't mean anything if students aren't interested. So um, I was lucky. My boss, Ms. Kirkland, um, was like, yeah, let's give it a shot. And we gave it a shot. We had a lot of students interested at first, and then it kind of died down a little. But we had a small group of very dedicated students that kept it going. And because of that, you, you actually have the podcast you're on now. So, um, yeah, it, it was just to see if there's any interest in there. And there absolutely was. So, um, I mean, our podcast helped spawn so many things. We have a comic book and anime club because we had a podcast where we talked about that and showed the, the interest in it. So um, I think it, it's a really good tool for, for the voice of our students. And if we can keep doing that and using it as that, I think we're always going to be around. Okay, I had a question. I'm not done yet, so. Oh. Go ahead, Dom. Where are you from? Where am I from? Yeah. Uh, so I'm from Orange County, uh, originally, but I moved to the we moved to the desert when I was pretty young, and I've been in the high desert ever since. Um, you know, Victorville, and right now Pinion Hills. So, I. I very much enjoyed being out in the desert. Victorville got a little too crowded for me. Um, Pinion Hills is very much middle of nowhere. And I really enjoy that. I enjoy being able to walk my dog around, um, to go outside and not hear neighbors screaming at each other. Um, that's always a lot of fun. I have a question and I am just fine if you don't answer it. Okay. How old are you? Oh, I have no problem telling you. I'm 39 actually. I'll be 40 this year, which is crazy. Thank you. All right. and any other questions, Dom? Uh, I think I have one more. Go for it. What three hobbies do you like the best? All right. Okay. So um, I actually really love working out. Um, I like going to gyms. I like, you know, walking and running. Uh, I get a lot of exercise with my dog because he's, uh, he's still a puppy and he drags me around everywhere. Um, wow. I love, just... uh, I, have a, I have a German Shepherd. Uh, he's an all-white German shepherd named Thor, and he he has so much energy, but he's a, he's a really good boy. Um, he's just a ball of energy, and then when he gets all tired, he just throws himself on the ground. So um, I couldn't have asked for a better dog. He's fantastic. We just got him in December. So that's one thing, exercising, exercising with my dog. Um, I like to write a lot. I like to write stories. I like to write, um, I have film scripts I've written. I've have comic book scripts I've written. Um, uh, I, well, that's what I used to do for a living, public relations. I used to write press releases and um, all that kind of stuff for people. Um, and if you love to write, that's a really good thing to get into because um, you could make a really good living off of, you know, making press releases, writing grants and whatnot for other people's businesses. So, um, and let's see, if I had a third hobby, I would say, you know, go into the movies. I just, I love going to the movies and that experience of getting the popcorn and dark theater. And it really doesn't matter what I'm watching. If it's a good movie, that's cool. Like the new Spider-Man was really cool to see, you know, on the big screen. But I mean, I could be watching anything just to experience that. Um, and to me, I always look at it as I'm supporting, you know, the arts with it. Good to question. Because I know just to go off we're talking about the dogs because i know we're going to have a pets episode in the future i think we are. so we are. Then, then again just stay I tuned know. we can you we can see finally mr smith's dog well we already seen it but you guys haven't i think I was that the same it. dog it was from last week we saw no no yeah so that dog last week was one that just wandered in <laughs> um my dogs are really um i thought that was your big dog puppy. oh that little one yeah. No, 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 no. My dog is um like. But you said it was your dog, so you just took a random dog and said it was yours. Oh, just a, yeah. I had a random dog and I had random chickens that just came over here. Yeah. Just it, twice it in the desert. It, it happens. Yeah, random chickens just come out. Desert chickens. Um, oh, but I wanted to ask um about your classes and like, what classes you're teaching this year, like this semester oh, actually. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, hey, there's a chicken here actually. They heard Sorry. you calling it. Chicken. Yeah, it's right there. It's right there. Um, I'm, I'm not even lying. Hold on. This happens daily, every week. Last yeah. week we saw some chickens, and now we see chickens again. Yep. 
It happens. Okay, so th this semester I'm teaching uh, Digital Marketing A, which is a class that um, I taught a few semesters ago. So I'm excited to jump back into that. Excited to jump back into that. Um, um, uh, I am teaching uh, wearable technology, yearbook B. We're actually putting together the yearbook for this year, um, and JavaScript animation. So uh, JavaScript is kind of like the next stage when it came to animation. We did scratch coding, which was a lot of fun. We did the hour of code and all that. Um, so this is the next step of that. So um, yeah, that's what oh, I'm teaching I know, this semester. Um, oh, the yearbook only has until for your photos to get in. February 4th is for the seniors. And then right. January 28th is for K through 11th. Yes, I just want to put it in there so people can know. Absolutely. I keep forgetting. I'm so. Yeah, make sure you send that over. There's a form you can fill out, or if you can't get the form to uh, cooperate with you, you can email yearbook at eliteacademic.com and get those oh, photos. So in. I wanted to ask, what was your favorite course of this, like your favorite class that you're teaching this semester? Th this semester? And what is your favorite course that you taught overall? Okay. Um, for this semester, it's probably going to be uh, yearbook B. We're going to be learning about marketing the yearbook using TikTok and Snapchat and all that in there. So that will be a lot of fun for students to use. Um, and my favorite class I've taught overall, I got to say, you know, and the, my favorite one that I graded last year was Scratch Coding. Um, because, you know, when your assignment is make a frogger name, you know, that's that's a pretty cool thing to be able to grade. You know, and I, I had so many really, really um, awesome students and they did a really good job on their projects so i would say that one i'm really looking forward to what javascript is going to bring this year um and then of course your book a was a lot of fun too because um we had students just creating such amazing templates and the one of them will be one that we chose to use for the yearbook this year and it's going to look really cool so we did our yearbook uh, last year are first you one we marketing ever did. this year yeah so i have digital marketing a is the one I'm teaching. And then digital publishing yearbook B is part of marketing. So I have two of the actual marketing courses and then wearable technology and JavaScript still fall under uh, me. So they're pretty cool. And I see JP wants to ask a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, why did the plan for the podcast did you plan for the podcast to be about school or something? I planned for it to be just for the I kids, plan, for the for the kids to be able to do what they wanted with it. So whether it was interview teachers or interview people that we get from outside, whatever they wanted to do. So we had brainstormed right at the beginning and said, "Well, what do we want to do? Okay, well, let's talk to Mr. Olson, you know, because he has the Adventure Academy." But we've also talked to, we've talked to superintendents, you know, we've talked to uh, people outside of our school. Um, and it's all, it's, I say it all the time, it's student driven. It's what the students want to do. So we had a lot of students that were interested in doing a comic book one. So we did a comic book episode, you know, we had a Star Wars episode, we had a Marvel episode. Um, and we're just going to keep going on that. The Lego episode was one of the if we get enough uh, students, participated. Mm -hmm. If we get enough students to want to do a K-Draw episode, can we do one? That's something we'll talk about in a brainstorm meeting for sure. Okay, I wanted to ask, um, can teachers join um, the podcast too? Oh, they're always welcome to attend. Because I know Absolutely. some of them want to attend, but they can't attend because it's at two o'clock. Then... Right, and I understand that you know teacher schedules are extremely busy. I completely understand that. Same with me. Uh, Fridays are like the busiest for me because that's when I do all my live sessions, all that fun stuff. Um, but if, if a teacher or staff member ever wants to join us and pop in, they are more than welcome. Because I know um, we had some teachers join us, like Mrs. Rosberg. I think she joined us for the... And Mr. Thomas. Like, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, they're always welcome to drop by the, the podcast. All right, uh, I think we're back up to... Let's see, Cindy Lou. Well, whoever else, else has a question, actually. I mean, if you have a question that you'd like to ask, go ahead. Oh, I see Maxwell. Go ahead. Um, oh, wait. Um, did you mean for this podcast to be about school or like something else? Well, yeah, JP had asked something similar to that. Um, it, it could be about school, but it's about what the kids want. So if the students want to talk to, you know, about the performing arts or they want to talk about the Adventure Academy, then we'll do it. 
Um, I see another hand up, Jaden. All right, all right. Um, let's get let's get real now. Um, did you think about getting a different job? Oh, like like since I've been here? Yes. Um, I can honestly say I have not thought about getting a different job, and that's kind of a first because usually if I have a job, I'm thinking like, okay, this is a good job, but what can I do to advance myself? You know, what can I do to better myself? That thought has not crossed my mind um, while I've been here. I've just really enjoyed being here. I have, haven't pulled up my resume since I started here. Um, that's a really good question. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have another question. Yeah. Uh, what was it like working with Shark Tank contestants? Oh, thank you. Um, so yeah, uh, doing PR, um, you never know who you're going to come across. And one of them was Shark Tank contestant. Um, she had this hair product thing. Um, and at the time when they reached out, you, we, we didn't know, you know, that this person was that we just knew it was a client looking for something. So I was like, okay, cool. Let me get something written up. So I worked with what they gave me. They were really cool. A lot of, um, just email back and forth. And by the time I got it ready, press release was like print ready. Um, I was told that, okay, yeah, this person, um, is going on Shark Tank. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's cool. Um, and yeah, it was a it was a fun experience. Um, I usually have a lot of fun when it comes to uh, working in PR. Um, I keep telling students in my marketing classes, like marketing doesn't have to be boring. Marketing can be anything. You can think of your favorite company and they need a marketer. It doesn't matter what it is. You right. know, um, like uh, for my live session coming up this week, we're talking about, we're talking Nike. And we're going to talk about how Nike uh, markets and why they're so good at it, because they're not really trying to sell you on their shoes. They're trying to sell you on their brand. So um, it's, a, it's always fun. Um, and I see a comment, you know, Shark Tank is an interesting show. You're right, because you have so many different startups and there's startups that we think would be really cool, right? Because we see it and we're like, oh, yeah, that could be cool. But as an investor, they look at it totally different. So it's really, really insightful for a small business to check out. Um, all right, so let's do JP and then we'll close it out with a question from Cindy. Go ahead, JP. Okay. Um, so out of all of the elite field trips, what was your favorite one? Well, I still got to go with the Poly Institute. Um, I really enjoyed being I out agree. there. Yeah, and you were, you were in my group over there. Yeah. And it was a fun time. I had never been there. I'd never been to um, even that that city so it was really cool to go out there and see that and you know i'm thankful that mr olson arranged all that um we had a really cool uh guide she was awesome and yeah no i i thoroughly enjoyed it but i was beat by the end of the day because i exhausting. forgot what her name was was her name maddie i think maddie yeah it was yes, maddie. yes. mad dog yeah <laughs> mad dog. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you for asking that jb like um, what do we got? Like Madeline, or like is there a different Maddie? She, just a Maddie. Yeah, she didn't. She didn't tell us what her name stood for. Just Maddie. Yeah, she was over at the Poly Institute, but she was great. I'm really glad we got her. She was very insightful. Um, she was great with the kids, so it was really cool. All right, Cindy Lou, can you ask a wrap up question to take us home on this? I know because you said oh, Cindy has a question. I'm like, I don't have a question. What are you talking about? And so oh, well, uh, I, I saw one that you wrote on there, and I saw it on our list, and I'll bring it up real quick. I didn't write I any think questions cool. on the. Somebody did because it's on the, it's on the list. But I want to uh, say it's... something. Oh, okay. So say, you go first. Uh, the Poly Institute was very cool. We also have an episode about it regarding on YouTube, and we have I think 60 views right now, almost 60. And so, so go I check think... it out. Yes, go check it out because I want to get it to like 90 or 100 because it's, it was it's one of our best episodes so far, I think. Since it's it is. It, it was really, really well done and it was a lot of fun. And so I wanted to ask you, what was your favorite episode that you've done overall so far For, on the podcast? Here at Elite? Mm -hmm. um, I would say, I mean, just to break up the you know, what we usually do, the poly one was probably the fun, the most fun because uh, we were on location and we got to be out there and do it. But out of all of our regular episodes, um, I know we just had it, but I would say the Lego one. Um, I felt the Lego one was really um, engaging. We had so many students with so much creativity. We got to see their stop motions and whatnot. And it was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. 
So thank you. Thank you, Cindy Lou. All right. Um, I think we're out of time. Maxwell, if you want to wrap it up for us. Yeah. Well, thank you for um, watching today's episode. Make sure to follow Elite on social media. And make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, please. Thank you all. We appreciate it. Take care. Bye.